is the first thing that comes in your mind or hot weather? Of course, we will think of ice cream! I bet you know what ice cream is, but let me explain it in a more scientific way. Ice cream is a multi-phase frozen food containing ice crystals, air cells, fat globules, and partially colored fat globules cluster displaced in an unfrozen cereal phase such as sugars, proteins, and stabilizers. If you have ever tried making ice cream at home, you already know what goes into it. Ingredients such as milk, cream, and sugar. But there is one main ingredient that you may not have thought about, probably because you can't see it. It is air. If you have tried ice cream from several brands or different ice cream shops, you may also find that some taste heavier and some has a lighter taste and creamier texture. This difference is due largely to the amount of air, or we can call it overrun. An overrun of 50% means that it has expanded 50%. For example, 1 gallon of mix will make 1.5 gallon of finished product. Gravity fat units typically yield on average about 35% overrun, which is the ideal overrun for ice cream. Wondering how air is added to the mixture? Air is added in churning or mixing process while the ice cream is being frozen. This is similar to adding air to cream to make whipped cream or making meringue by beating egg whites. So, how the air affects ice cream and what exactly is overrun? Overrun is the amount of air incorporated and expressed as the percentage increase in volume attributed to air. It shows in both the appearance and taste of the ice cream. Soft serve with the optimum overrun is dry in appearance and stands up well without dropping. We people may say that a product is too warm when in fact it is cold enough but lacks the proper amount of air which gives its structure and body. So how about the texture? The amount of air used affects the final texture of ice cream. If a small amount of air is used, the ice cream will be dense, heavy, and colder. More air produces ice cream that is light, creamy, and less cold. So how do we differentiate high quality and low quality ice cream from the appearance? The whiter the soft serve, the better the quality. As ice cream melts, you may have noticed this yellow color, which is simply the actual color of the ingredients used to make it. By adding air and fluffing it up, Ice cream is better able to reflect white light, producing the white color. Soft serve with insufficient air will have a yellowish color. My blonde, right? However, some of us totally have no idea if we are eating the pure ice cream or just air ice cream. So, this is where FDA comes into place. The air regulates the amount of overrun in ice cream in order to prevent unscrupulous manufacturers from producing and selling an ice cream product that is mainly air instead of cream. Thanks to FDA so that we as consumers are not lied or misled by the manufacturers to buy the ice cream that basically only contains air. This is because the molecules in ice cream are large enough to reflect visible light. Whereas, for example, water molecules are too small to reflect visible light because the size of a water molecule is smaller than the wavelength of visible light. Since low overrun produces a higher quality of ice cream, can we just not incorporate air into the mixture? The answer is no. Overrun is necessary for ice cream making. Why overrun is so important? Overrun is necessary to create ice cream. Without air added, ice cream would be a frozen block like an ice cube. 
This would make the ice cream difficult or impossible to scoop or eat with a spoon and would also give it a very icy texture that would probably not taste very good. Don't really get what I'm saying? Let me show you a real life example. Have you ever wondered why McDonald's Sunday corn only costs one ringgit, but some ice cream from other stores costs more than ten ringgit with the same volume? However, we normally feel more satisfied after having the more expensive ice cream instead of the one ringgit Sunday corn. Here is why: McDonald's soft serve actually has higher overrun. The incorporated air is basically free. That is the reason why it is so cheap. Since ice cream is a mixture of water, air, and fat, how do we break the nature of oil being water insoluble? Here comes the reason why we need to add emulsifier and stabilizer during ice cream making. So, how does the emulsifier work? The emulsifier aid emulsion formation and short-term stabilization by interfacial tension. In the absence of emulsifiers, this unstable emulsion breaks down within minutes, and the oil forms a layer on top of water, we call immiscible phases. Addition of emulsifier inhibited air cell coarsening in ice cream is due to the increased extent of fat destabilization. Fat destabilization refers to the process of clustering and clumping of the fat globules. Emulsifiers contain both a hydrophilic, which is water-loving or polar head group, and a hydrophobic, oil-loving or non-polar tip. Therefore, emulsifiers are attracted to both polar and non-polar compounds. When added to an oil-in-water emulsion, emulsifiers surround the oil droplet with their non-polar tails, extending into the oil, and their polar head group facing the water. After the emulsion forms, it does not stable for a long time. Therefore, we need stabilizer. On the other hand, how does the stabilizer work? The stabilizer supplies long-term emulsion stability. Addition of stabilizer inhibited air cell coarsening in ice cream is due to the increased viscosity of fluid space. This potentially inhibited the mobility of air cells and decreased ripening. Therefore, the increased viscosity will decrease the rate of change of air cells. Besides, if the viscosity is low, it will allow water to migrate from small to large ice crystals, increasing the average ice crystal size. Nevertheless, the influence of stabilizers on water mobility can have a useful effect of minimizing this ripening effect at any level of freeze concentration. One thing that is more important about stabilizer. Do you realize there are some ice crystal form on the ice cream that you have been taken in and out from the freezer for multiple times? These are the examples of ice crystals formed on ice cream. Even if it's grainier and less tasty, but it is surely beautiful. This is a process what we call heat shock. Heat shock is the industry term for the silico temperature conditions to which ice cream is exposed. Heat shock may cause growth of ice crystals, and if the ice crystals become large enough, they give ice cream a coarse texture. Stabilizers such as squat gum, carrot bean gum, and cellulose gum, which function to reduce the degree of ice crystal growth. Control of ice crystal growth by stabilizers is related to influencing the mechanism of recrystallization during heat shock. Stabilizer functionality also controls ice crystal growth by managing ripening that occurs during early stages of hardening and situations during storage and distribution. 
addition of locusts being dumped to ice cream resulted in a decrease in the rate at which ice crystal grew both during heat shock and during storage at constant temperatures. Increasing the concentration of locusts being gum or gua resulted in a decrease in the rate of recrystallization. So, after watching this video, are you craving ice cream now? It is very important to be a smarter consumer. So, observe the appearance of the ice cream, feel the creamy texture in your mouth, and taste every bit of the flavor. And you might be thinking if it's a high or low quality ice cream. Alright, never mind. Forget about it. Just enjoy your ice cream! We hope you enjoyed watching the video and now have a brief idea of the science behind an ice cream. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.